it is important that uh, we also with our own example what we speak and what are our deeds that we give an example to others and encourage others also to use their fundamental rights Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to Framework Leadership Podcast, where we talk with leaders from across the globe and explore their leadership techniques and strategies for guiding organizations to achieve health and success. I'm your host, Kent Engel, president of Southeastern University. I'm your co-host, Michael Steiner, senior vice president for advancement and innovation. And excited to introduce our guest for today's show, Paivi Rasanen. She is a member of the Finnish Parliament has been a member since 1995, having previously worked as a medical doctor from 2004 to 2015. She was the chairwoman of the Finnish Christian Democrats and served for four years as the Minister of, of the Interior of Finland between 2011 and 2015. Pivey currently serves as a member of the Social Affairs and Health Committee and a deputy matter, uh, member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Pivey, it's great to have you on our podcast today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I'd love to uh, begin our conversation uh, talking about free speech, specifically in regards to your free speech trial where um, ADF International coordinated your legal defense. I actually had the privilege of meeting you this summer, hearing you speak at the Alliance for Defending Freedom event. From there, I knew uh, that I wanted to talk to you more about your a free speech um, trial, your story, especially since this is becoming a growing global issue. So mm -hmm. for our listeners who are unaware, you were charged with hate speech by both the Helsinki District Court of the Court of Appeal for sharing your faith-based views on marriage and sexual ethics in a tweet back in 2019. Um, as an obvious advocate for religious freedom, your case has captured international um attention as you face legal challenges for your faith-based beliefs. Can you uh, talk to us about your case, including the, the trials and what you've endured and how it's impacted your, your personal and professional life? Yes, thank you. Um, so this has been a long process. It has lasted over five years. So it all began, start, started uh, five years ago, uh, when I uh, reacted uh, to the uh, statements of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Finland, which is the main church of, of Finland, and its leadership decided to support the Pride event, Pride March in, in Helsinki, Pride Parade in Helsinki. And it was to me and to many others in, in, in the church, it was some kind of uh, disappointment and, and shock. And I have to say and, and tell that I have been an active member of Lutheran Church for decades. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have been also in, in its, uh, for example, I have been in synod of, mm -hmm. of the Lutheran, Lutheran Church and so on. And um, uh, I was very worried that when bishops and the leadership of church, uh, when they take this kind of statement, uh, they undermine people's trust on Bible to the foundation of the church. And, and uh, on, on some, some time they, they uh, lead astray, especially young people. And then it's not only about marriage or gender, it is also about salvation yes, <laughs> of these people. Yes. And, and that's why I, I um, updated my Twitter and I took a photo from the Bible, from, from the first chapter, chapter of Romans, where Apostle Paul teaches about these issues. And, mm -hmm. and um, I gave a question to the leadership of the church in the in this Twitter update that how does your statement fit to the Bible, mm. <laughs> to the message of the Bible. And after that, some citizen made a criminal complaint about my Twitter update and police started to investigate. 
uh, this and when it came into public, I have been a public figure in, in Finnish politics when it came to public, then there came more and more complaints about my writings and my radio interviews and TV, TV shows and, and so on. And then um, I, I was... Uh, many times interrogated by police in wow. police station about these writings and and about my statements uh, and um, what i had said it was nothing not any uh, hate speech i i have not uh, spoken ugly about any any people i have all the time said that all people are equal mm. we are all created at created as image of god but but uh, what um, Bible teaches, it, it also talks about sin and, yeah, and right. this God says what is sin and what is not. So it, they, this has, these have been very religious matters. For example, when I was interrogated by police, the police was asking me about the Bible. I had the Bible on the table and police was asking that, what is the message of the Book of Romans? What do you mean by the word of sin? Mm. And, and so on. Uh, and then uh, the police didn't find any crime from my writings, but the prosecutor general of Finland ordered the police to continue wow. and and the prosecutor uh, filed up charges and and um i uh, in um 2022 i was in helsinki district court uh, accused about these uh, writings and mm. and my my uh, twitter updates and uh, there was also a pamphlet that i had written already 2004, it was a church booklet about marriage and, and gender issues. And, but I was, I was acquitted. There were three judges uh, and, and uh, they unanimously <laughs> acquitted me, but the prosecutor continued and, and appealed to the appellate court. Mm. It was last year and last November the court of appellate in Helsinki, it uh, acquitted me again cool. <laughs> of all these charges. But uh, the prosecutor is very stubborn yeah. and, and he is continuing the process. And now I'm waiting for the trial in Supreme Court of wow. Finland. Wow. So this is still going on. Mm. Wow. And yeah. Now yeah. this is, um, I mean, this is a big deal in that this is two years of imprisonment, right? If 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 yeah. it rules the other way, I mean, this is not just a fine. This is not just a civil issue. I mean, we're talking about about actual criminal charges here. Why, why yes. do you think that? I mean, obviously everybody's got their reasons. What is motivating the prosecutor? I mean, when you've got two courts and the police that doesn't want to prosecute this, what's mm -hmm. what's going on behind the scenes, in your opinion? Yes, this is a very good question, and I have been thinking a lot <laughs> about yeah. it. And and uh, in in fact, uh, this um, uh, I'm accused about a crime, which uh, which name is agitation against minorities, and it can mm. it can bring up to two years jail yeah. or heavy fine, and uh, it 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 is. Um, in, in the Finnish criminal code, uh, it is included in um, quite serious crimes, mm. crimes against humanity and war crimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's why it is just the, um, the prosecutor general who is uh, in charge of that. Ah, I, I think that um, they want to get a precedent. We have just now in Finland, as as also in Europe, uh, I would say that we have some kind of cultural war yeah. <laughs> against Chris Christian yeah. values and the LGBT advocates, they are quite prominent mm. and very active and they are also inside the pro prosecu prosecutor's office mm -hmm. uh, impacting their 
And uh, when, when the former prosecutor was nominated to her office, she has now changed. Now we have a male, male prosecutor. But mm. when she was, she started this process. And when she was nominated to her office, she said that she wants to fight mm. against hate speech. And, and she has, uh, I think that um, she found that I am, uh, I, I, I am uh, a person who fits right. <laughs> there. I have been in public life for 30 decades, uh, three decades, 30 years, and uh, and I have been quite outspoken about Christian values, about marriage and pro-life issues and that kind of issues. And, and I have been also in many debates, in public debates with, with those uh, LGBT people. Mm -hmm. So yeah. perhaps... I was a good target. Right, to right. This. Well, and it's—I mean, it's very much you are the. It, it sounds to me what what we have here, and and we can talk about this more. Is is if they win here with you, right? Who's a reasonable, rational, and it very much a Bible base, right? It, it really is the Scripture that's on trial, not necessarily an individual. For the first time, we have someone that didn't come in with rhetoric, but just pure Scripture. And so, if they if they can win the case against the scripture, um, that opens the door wide open. I can imagine, uh, you know, on on your side is is probably what they're what they're motivated about. Yes, indeed, uh, and uh, I think that there is also one purpose is to have some kind of silencing effect mm -hmm. when when to people ordinary people see that what can be the consequence if you speak mm. you. <laughs> It is not easy for everyone to be in right. long processes. Right. Uh, it, yeah. it is expensive. It takes your time, yeah. and and so on. And and as you said, I feel very strongly that yeah. it is not only uh, some kind of fight or attack yeah. against me. It is it is really it is against the Bible. Yeah. And also, uh, it is it is funny that uh, the. Um, public broadcasting company of Finland, uh, secular uh, broadcasting company, when they um, when they um, um, informed about this case, they named this legal case as um, trial against Bible. Mm. This is Bible trial. So the Bible is on trial, wow. <laughs> not yeah. only me. Yeah, so this is... Um... You know, this is about religious freedom. It's about religious persecution. Um, and I want to ask you, as, I mean, you've, I, I know you've had to deal with so much uh, backlash throughout this trial. I mean, all kinds of, you know, different, but you've also received a lot of support as well. Um, what, what lessons as you've gone through this, have you learned about leadership your your and perseverance through something like this and and what encouragement would you give to people who uh, are wanting to take a stand and and especially when it comes to religious freedom when it comes to our values and beliefs as a Christ-centered person who believes in in the Bible as God's authoritative word to us mm. Yes, I indeed I have had a lot of support. Also, there has been backlash, and and in in public there, ha, of course, there have been many many attacks against me. But but also very much uh, support and encouragement. And I have been so encouraged that I have got thousands and thousands of messages from people who tell that they are praying for me and yeah. and 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 they are supporting supporting me also from Finland and abroad and many people have told that they feel that I am not fighting only mm. for me and my my freedom of speech but also for them and I, I think that it is so important. We are living in such a time that it is so important to 
stand firmly on mm. these uh, on on these uh, uh, b- biblical issues mm-hmm. and and uh, on what you believe, mm-hmm. and uh, we uh, um, in Finland and and in Europe we have very similar laws about. Uh, freedom of speech. We have the freedom of speech and religion in our constitution, but then we have those hate speech laws, with, which can be quite dangerous, mm-hmm. <laughs> as, as we see now in Finland. Uh, but um, I, I think that now we are living in that kind of time that for us Christians, it is very important to, uh, to be open about our faith. Uh, to, to be open about what Bible teaches about these issues, mm. uh, because um, the more we are silent, uh, the narrower becomes the space for these freedoms. Mm. So it is not um, uh, it, it it doesn't help right. if you try to be very <laughs> silent about this issue issues. Uh, because uh, you are more and more attacked. Yeah. And that's why I think that it is important that uh, we also with our own example, what we speak and what are our deeds, that we give an example to others and encourage others also to use their fundamental rights mm-hmm. and, and freedoms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. but I have to say that I have got uh, during this process, uh, a lot of a lot of joy mm. and a lot of encouragement. Yeah. So I'm not at all bitter. I'm thankful to God yes. mm-hmm. for for this process because this has also opened up such uh, challenges and such opportunities that I had never got this without this process. Yes, uh, I, I have. I have not before this case uh, got such uh, so many opportunities to speak, for example, in from mm. from the courthouse and from press conferences straight to Finnish homes about gospel <laughs> and yes. about uh, biblical issues. So I'm I'm thankful <laughs> for yeah. this process. Got it. And what do you think is going to be the effect of this case, you know, regardless of how it affects, how is it this going to expect similar legal battles in other countries? I know there's some, there's some battles happening in the United States, there's some in other countries in Europe. What do you think the ramifications are going to be about this case? Yes, I, I, I think that it will have. And um, I, I, I know that, for example, in, in Europe, in, in other European countries where they have very similar laws and, and quite similar cases mm. just behind the corner waiting. Wow. <laughs> uh, so this, um, this has uh, really uh, ramifications. Mm-hmm. If, I, if I get a victory from, uh, from the Supreme Court, it would uh, bring a very a strong precedent for freedom of speech mm-hmm. and uh, also in other european countries the uh, courts for example and judges they they follow <laughs> the mm. cases in other yeah. european countries and so it it would have impact on on legislations and and legal legal cases in other other european countries but i know that also the lgbt people and networks mm-hmm. they are also right. <laughs> following right. this case yeah. if, if i would lose this case it would be also very very dangerous right. uh, yeah. precedent and, and consequences i i think really because i'm not the only one who has written or mm. spoken this this, about these issues, we have thousands and thousands of similar, similar writings, and they they would be in danger right. after that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, as we wrap up our conversation, um, you know, I believe right now uh, the United States is the only country 
uh, and I may be wrong, but I believe it's the only country right now that does not have hate speech. However, we're in the midst of an election here, and we are hearing our candidates actually start to make statements like um, free speech is a privilege and not a right. You have to listen to that very carefully. And then you actually have uh, one of the candidates uh, declaring um, that um, hate speech uh, takes away your free speech. Um, well, again, how are they going to determine what is hate speech? So we're, we're, you know, we're close in this nation to possibly facing some of the same things that you have been facing. Um, and I want to ask you as we close this podcast out, um, moving forward as a person who is involved in um, political leadership, how do you believe governments can best address conflicts regarding the protection of free speech? Yes, I I have learned my lesson <laughs> that uh, those hate speech laws they they are very dangerous because they are very vague. It right. is very it is impossible uh, to to. Uh, to say that what is hate speech and what is not, it, it is based on your ideology, ideology and and politics. But you 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 think <laughs> what is hate speech and and um, that's why I, I think that uh, and I, I congratulate that you do not have mm -hmm. yet that kind of laws and it is it is important <laughs> not to have in the in the future. Uh, and in fact, I, I I have to tell that in uh, in Europe, in 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 European Union, we have a danger just now that we would have an European wide uh, hate speech law. Uh, already some years ago, the European Commission gave an initiative. Uh, to extend the list of EU crimes such as terrorism or trafficking of human beings also to hate speech. Mm. Uh, it was then blocked by some countries, for example, Hungary and Poland. But I, I know that they are trying this again and it would be, it would be dangerous. Yes. And, uh, so I, I think that it is it is important because such, just as you said that uh, they um, they um, defend these laws by saying that uh, when you when you hinder hate speech you defend free speech, yeah. but <laughs> it is it is it's not so because. Right. Yeah. Yes. And then, of course, the most important, uh, how we can defend uh, freedom of speech is to use it. Yes. <laughs> if you do yes. not use right. your rights to freedom of speech and religion, then, as I said, the space will be more and more narrow. It will be narrower. Yes. It has happened in Finland, and I, I think that is the reason why I am here, <laughs> why yeah. I, I am in in, in court, yeah. that we, we have been too silent. The, yeah. the Finnish church and Christians, they have be, been too silent. Yeah, yeah. Well, just grateful for you, uh, uh, and just know that our community is praying for you, and we stand with you, and... Um, one of my favorite passages uh, of scripture that talks about how we are to respond to these kinds of issues. It's in uh, the uh, book, book of First Corinthians. Paul talks about, you know, that we must always, um, you know, uh, be on, on alert and we have to stand firm in our faith. Mm -hmm. he, he admonishes us to be strong he admonishes us to be courageous. And then the last thing he says, Paul says in that passage, is that we must do everything with love and that people see that yes. motivation. And uh, you definitely have um, embodied that in, in how you have approached uh, this difficult journey, but a journey that God, I believe, 
is going to use to, mm-hmm. to make a, an impact uh, uh, across the globe. And so uh, just know we're, we're behind you and support you. And thank you again for taking time to be on this podcast and to have a conversation with us about these crucial issues. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Well, God bless you, Pivey. Awesome. And if you want to stay up to date with Pivey, make sure to follow her on X and Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much for tuning into Framework Leadership today. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today on Framework Leadership. If you're watching on YouTube, now would be a great time to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you can get incredible leadership content right to your YouTube feed. You can also check us out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts every single week, Framework Leadership. And if you love great email newsletters, and I know I do, make sure you check out KenEngle.com and subscribe to the Framework Leadership newsletter. It's an incredible piece of content we put out every single week of amazing leadership resources right to your inbox. Box. Make sure you check it out. You can also follow us on Instagram at Kent underscore Engel at Dr. Michael Steiner on X at Kent Engel and on Facebook at Kent dot Engel. Stay up to date on all the incredible things happening on the podcast and at Southeastern University. We love you guys and we love our followers and our subscribers. Thank you so much for listening to the Framework Leadership Podcast.